Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. In this part, we'll talk briefly about the default applications that ship with elementary OS and their purpose. First, the file browser. This is pretty standard. By default, it's not present in the dock, but I highly suggest you drag it there from the application menu. It includes a places sidebar with your favorites and devices, three view modes, icons, columns, and a list view that is reminiscent of Mac OS X, as well as a back and forward button. The address bar can be clicked to type a path, or you can just click on any part of it to go back to a previous folder. It also has tabs, which you might not be familiar on the file browser if you're coming from Windows, and a history button on the right. A few handy tricks. Right-click allows you to show or hide hidden folders and files, and zooming is possible with a press of Ctrl and a scroll on the scroll wheel or on your trackpad. It also supports color labels. Right-click on a file or folder and select one of the colors to add it to the file name. Next, the web browser. Epiphany is the default web browser on elementary OS. It is right here on the dock. It's serviceable enough with just what you'd expect from a modern browser. It's based on WebKit, just like Apple's Safari, and its performance is good enough for today's browsing tasks. You'll find a pretty standard elementary OS interface with tabs, a back-forward button, a reload button, and another one to create a new tab. Its preferences are scarce, even though you can disable pop-up windows and ads natively. Epiphany does not support extensions at the moment, so if you have advanced browsing needs, you'll probably want to replace it by Firefox or Chromium, which are available in the App Center. We'll talk about that in another part of this guide. Third, the calendar. It's just what you'd expect, a simple calendar. You can create a new event, switch to today's date, and switch between month and year. A side panel shows you the events planned for the day you've selected on the calendar. You can also add new calendars with colors and export or share those you created. You won't find any options here, but all events created will be visible as well in the calendar present in the top panel of the main elementary interface. Event creation is pretty straightforward with simple date, comments, location, participants, reminders, and repeat options. Fourth is the mail client. This is your standard email client. Based on Geary, it is a good basic piece of software. You can add multiple accounts, use labels, create folders, and preview your email in full HTML glory. Or horror if you're against HTML email. That happens. Nothing special to note here, it does what you'd expect, and I use it for my personal email, which there is few of. Fifth comes the camera. If you've got a webcam setup, it's a simple enough program to use. Just switch between photo and video mode and take a picture of your smiling face. Nothing to get particularly excited, it just does the job. Next is the music player, called Music. This is a good music library program if your needs are simple. There is not much to configure here, just the folder where you store your files and if you want music to reorganize your folders for you. You have an album view, a list view and a browser view, which will be the most useful, I think. It has playlist support as well as an equalizer. Note that it will also integrate with the sound indicator in the top panel, which will give you commands right at your fingertips to pause, play your music. Next, photos. This is your main photo library or photo manager. It can import pictures for you, and it actually hosts photos and videos. You have a few plugins to export some to some social media spaces, and a neat zoom slider on the bottom. Those that use iPhoto or Apple Photos will be right at home here. To select a photo, click on the little tick that appears in the top left corner when you hover over it. Clicking on the picture will open it in full screen. When a picture is selected, you can then edit it with simple tools such as flipping it, rotating it, or automatically enhancing it. No advanced photo editing tools here, you'll have to turn to Digicam or another piece of software for heavy lifting. Next, on to the other apps. Elementary OS also ships with a few more apps available by default, such as a basic terminal utility for your command line needs, the system settings, which we'll talk about in another part, a simple text code editor named Scratch, and a video player, as well as the App Center, which will be the focus of another video in this guide. Some apps are not present at all, such as an office suite, a messaging video conferencing app, but fear not, you can install all that from the App Center. Finally, changing default apps. This is pretty easy. Just open the System Settings app and go to Applications. You'll then see a few categories, which you can then edit to select which program you want to fulfill each role. These lists will populate automatically when you install new apps that can fulfill one of those roles. So in the end, the default app selection in elementary OS is pretty light, but it gets the job done for most users. So that's it for this part, guys. We'll detail each app in its own video, as well as present alternatives to each one. In the next part, we'll talk about installing applications from the App Center, the main store of elementary OS. I hope to see you guys in the next one, and bye! 
If you want to support the channel further, please consider sparing three small clicks. Thank you guys for the support!